today I'm going to be showing you guys how you can take regular old Play-Doh, found objects or objects you might already have in your craft space, put them together and make some interesting and unique patterns on your gel plate. Now, why try this, right? <laughs> I ended up trying it because I often see patterns and textures out there, you know, when I'm out living life that I want to put on my gel plate, but they're not really on things that can go on a gel plate. Or they might be on things that I don't want to cover in acrylic paint, right? Things like walls, baskets, vases, candle holders, um, you know, picture frames, etc. So using this technique, you can print almost any pattern that you can find. Second, this technique really stretches the supplies that you already have. I'm gonna show you guys a bunch of amazing prints using dies, stamps, embossing folders, things that most of us already have around. And finally, if you try this, you'll find out that this is incredibly fun and I feel like that's reason enough to try it. You'll start to look at everything with an eye towards creating with it once you've tried this. It will really get your creative juices flowing and you may not wanna stop once you get started. So before we get started, let's go ahead and discuss what you'll need if you want to try this. Now, um, you'll need some Play-Doh. I ended up using the name brand stuff, name brand Play-Doh. You can get this for cheap. I've, I found them for 50 cents per can at Walmart. You could also use the Dollar Tree dough, <laughs> not Play-Doh, just dough. And you'll get four for $1.25, a little bit cheaper, but it, well, I ended up not using this because it's a little firmer for me. It's a little harder to roll out and work with. And what I would caution against is using homemade Play-Doh. Because I've made Play-Doh before with my kids. It tends to be a bit too wet or moist is what I found because you don't want the Play-Doh to stick to whatever you're putting it on, you want it to come off clean. Um, so in addition to the Play-Doh, you need a um, gel plate. I ended up using two five by sevens. I might use a round plate in there somewhere. I'm not sure. You'll need something to spread your paint out with, which I, I will use a brayer. And you'll also need something to flatten the Play-Doh. Now I have this rolling pin that I use just for crafting, um, but you could also use your brayer to flatten the Play-Doh. I find the, the brayer worked just fine as well. You will need some acrylic paints. I have many different brands, whatever brand you have should work and you'll need some papers to print on, obviously, and then you'll need some textures. I'm gonna be showing you a bunch of different ones, but the best ones will give you a nice indentation that you can print with. Okay, so let's check out how it works. So my first set of prints are going to be using baskets and baskets, if you wanna try this technique, baskets are a great place to start because almost every basket is different and they're gonna give you some really great indentations and prints to work with. I'm probably not gonna narrate this whole thing. I'm gonna put some music on and let you guys watch me work, but I did wanna let you know something about the Play-Doh. When you do the prints with the Play-Doh, the Play-Doh is gonna get very painty or, or inky if you can, you can use your ink pads on this technique, with this technique too. They're gonna, the Play-Doh is gonna get dirty. And I, you guys, I did not do anything to clean it, quote unquote, or like make it less dirty at all. Once you stamp this on here, you're gonna put it on and give it some light pressure. You see that the Play-Doh is picking up the paint. So it's gonna end up very painty at the end, as you can see. And all I did really was um, roll it back into a ball and work the paint into the Play-Doh. And it worked out perfectly. I didn't have a single problem doing it that way. The only thing you'll notice is that the Play-Doh will start to get darker over time. But every piece of Play-Doh that I used during the whole time I've been playing with this technique is still usable. It just you know it's painty it's dirty but I never once had a problem either with paint transferring from the play-doh onto something else like if you wanted to mash the play-doh into a vase or into something that was white I never had a problem with paint transferring from the play-doh to a clean object um, the, the play-doh actually doesn't transfer paint very well from itself to something else it, it picks up paint well but it doesn't transfer it very well so I just something to keep in mind um, you're going to notice that yet your Play-Doh is getting dirty, it's getting inky, it's getting painty, and really that's not a problem. Just roll it back up and keep on moving. As you will see here, these first two prints ended up, I think, coming out really well. And this is just, you know, the, fir the first iteration of, of what's to come. But as you can tell, the Play-Doh will transfer textures really well and... Um, there's just so many um, methods that you could take to 
get some cool patterns and textures on your gel plate. So I'm going to leave this here on fast forward. I'm going to put some music on. I'm going to let you guys watch me do the rest of these textures. I might jump in um, if I have something to share about what's going on on the screen. But if not, I'll see you guys back at the end. Enjoy.
Okay, I wanted to jump back in here really quick because I'm about to show you guys a series of textures that I took from embossing folders, rubber stamps, and dies. Now, you can, of course, just go straight onto the gel plate with your stamps, and you can emboss or die cut paper that you can then use to make texture directly on your gel plates, right? But this technique um, with the Play-Doh is still worth your time, and I'll tell you why. One, you can isolate um, patterns from an embossing folder or die, which is what I'm showing you here. I've isolated one of the flowers. I'm gonna use it to print only that flower. I'm also gonna show you in a bit how you can distort a pattern by stretching out the Play-Doh. Additionally, you can take stamps or dies and you can make collages with them on the Play-Doh, which make beautiful and complex prints on your gel plate. You can also combine supplies, which I'm also gonna show you. You can easily use stamps over embossed backgrounds, right? So this technique can really stretch your supplies. Finally, and honestly, this is not <laughs> insignificant to me, using this technique, um, you don't have to worry about cleaning acrylic paint off of your supplies, especially your rubber stamps. The Play-Doh requires no cleaning, so that is a bonus. Okay, let's get back to it.
I am back and this is the recap. I'm just going to go through and show you guys all of the prints that we were able to do together. And there are a few in there that you probably didn't see on camera because I had to cut this video off <laughs> at some point. Otherwise, it would have been two hours long. I spent such a long time doing this because I had so much fun. And my favorite prints ended up being this one, actually, the notebook coil one. I really liked how that one turned out. And I liked the one. It was a die. And it was like a crosshatch shaped die that I cut into a circle it was this one right here I really liked it so much so I think I did it more than once there's another one there those were my favorites so let me know in the comments which ones you guys like best and let me know if you plan on trying this technique really you must <laughs> because it was so much fun and I know you'll have fun at it too I hope you guys liked this video that you got some ideas and that you do plan on trying it for yourself and if you did like it please go ahead and hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you never miss a video additionally if there's someone out there that you think would also enjoy this video don't hesitate to share it with them because it really helps out the channel I hope to see you guys next time and in the meantime have a creative day Bye-bye.